Hello and welcome to My Astronomy Nights. I'm Derek and in this video I'm looking at M13. Now M13 is a wonderful globular cluster in the constellation of Hercules and it's in the south this time of year, just passing the meridian after midnight for the next few months. So it makes for a really good target for observing or imaging throughout the summer. Now locating M13 is quite easy. You just need to find that keystone asterism at the center of Hercules and then you're looking for those westernmost stars, um, Eta and Zeta Herculis, just over on the side towards Corona Borealis. And then you want to move about two and a half degrees from Eta towards Zeta, so just about a third of the way between the two of them. And you'll see a nice little fuzzy star there flanked by two other magnitude 7 stars and that is the Hercules Cluster. So there's no other trick to find in this, it's quite simple, so once, you, once you've located it once you'll find yourself returning over and over again to observe it, even on general nights just when you're setting up. You'll just have a quick look to compare seeing conditions. So M13 is the 13th member of Messier's catalogue. This one was discovered by Edmund Halley in 1714 when he was making a catalogue of southern stars and it shines at a magnitude of 5.8 so it's just visible to the naked eye from a good dark site and it has an apparent diameter of about 20 arc minutes. Now this apparent diameter can look slightly different depending on the optics you're using. If you're using a small telescope it'll look a little smaller and then when you're using a large light gathering telescope um, like a 12 inch Dobsonian that I have it looks a little larger and then in images again it can increase the size of it because the stars kind of spread out towards those two magnitude 7 stars that flank out the side of it. Now when you're observing this it's quite interesting to think about the placement of it with the Messier 13 is placed about 25,000 light years away and then you have that little blue um, blue hot star on it flanking on one side the magnitude 7 that sits about 400 light years and the, the orange red star is about 2000 light years so you have that kind of depth of field as you're looking at it and then furthermore there's a little um, galaxy nearby in the same kind of a, a field about 20 arc minutes away from the center and that's sitting at somewhere between 30 and 45 million light years away so you can get all these in your eyepiece it's quite interesting to think of the depth of field that you're observing So when observing Messier 13, um, NGC 6207 is a really good target to try to hunt down if you have good aperture. It's a little spiral galaxy that's about 20 arc minutes away in the north northeast of the core of Messier 13. And it, it's quite dim, it shines at 11.6 magnitude, but because it's so small, it's only um, a one by two and a half arc minute galaxy, it has a good surface brightness. So if you have good aperture, you should be able to pick it up. Now I was observing this with my 12 inch Dobsonian and I was able to pick up that um, elliptical shape and a little bit of the spiral structure. Um, it's a really nice one to observe because you can, if you have a wide enough field of view, you can get the Galaxy and Messier 13 into the same uh, eyepiece and you can be observing something that's sitting at 25,000 light years away in Messier 13. And then NGC 6207 is, is further away at 30 to 45 million light years. So for collecting the data on M13, I was using my 200 PDS and I also used my Evolux 82ED to get two separate images, one with a, a tighter field of view and one with the wider field of view so it can include um, NGC 6207. Now it was spread out over a few weeks and I was using my RGB filters because I was trying to get images of Messier 13, Messier 92 and NGC 6229 all together and with the shorter evenings it just took a while to get so I was just spreading them out over two videos for the comparison and I will compare M92 and M13 in the next video and you can see those lovely orange stars con contrasting with the blue um, so I was very happy with the way the RGB came out and I was processing in Cyril and Photoshop. So Messier 13 is a wonderful target for observing it shows up really well in any size aperture if you if you have a chance to use larger aperture it's really good because you get that sense of the scale as you work your way down through your aperture and you can kind of see it better than when you're using your binoculars or a smaller refractor 
it shows up really well i was using my 82 millimeter and it shows the colors really nice that contrast between the blue and the orange red stars that flank either side and that kind of smoothness throughout of the globular cluster compared to say mezia 92 where there's quite a bright core um, in my smaller refractor, I found it quite difficult to hunt down NGC 6207. But then when I increased up and was using my 12 inch Dobsonian, that became much more visible sitting in the north northeast and I was able to pull out some of the spiral structure. And then within uh, Mezia 13 itself, you can go hunting down that um, propeller marking that's in it. It's this little dark channel in a Y shape and um, it sits in the southwest. Now this took me multiple times with my large telescope to find and once once I was able to bring it out because the scale of it is quite tricky but once you see it, it's kind of like a magic eye once you see it you're going to see it every time you're coming back to the cluster. So my observations for this video were made mostly with my 12 inch and I was also using my 82 millimeter refractor on a couple of nights and uh, my goal on this was to try to observe the propeller within the cluster and NGC 6207 and then I was using the refractor then to see how much of that I could pick up and also if I could um, compare the colors of the two stars that are sitting next to the cluster. So when I was using my small refractor I found that I was it was much easier to pick out the blue and the red color of the two little stars that sit either side of the cluster compared to my Newtonian telescope. I think the 12 inch was just gathering a little bit too much light and there's some really nice color comes through on the 82 millimeter refractor and I could really see that blue and the red even in the with the skies being not as dark as you'd hope. The other target I was focused on was NGC 6207, that's the little spiral galaxy that um, sits off to the north northeast of the cluster. Now this one I had picked up in photographs before, but I had never seen it uh, visually, so it was great to get my 12 inch on this and actually pick it up and see a little bit of that spiral structure and the, the shape of it. It's quite bright, it is small, but it's quite bright. So finally I went in search for the propeller within the globular cluster and I looked for this before and never had any success so it was great to finally track it down. It took a couple of nights, I think it was this, it was seeing dependent. But it's very much a case that once you have seen it you won't unsee it and it really stands out now whenever I get um, M13 in the eyepiece. So all in all, M13 is a fantastic target uh, this time of year. It's really easy to locate and I found that you can observe it for hours. It's got so much detail going on in the edges of the cluster and those little tendrils of stars and the detail within it. It's, it's a really good target, especially with the little galaxy nearby. Um, in my next video, I'll be looking at M92 and M6229 and comparing the other clusters of Hercules. Thanks so much for watching. Clear skies.